Moving on, some big news coming out of the championship today. Preston North End no longer with their manager um, low in the end. Erdem, give us your thoughts. I just think there's a bust up behind the scenes. I think, um, not I think, I know Ryan Lowe's a winner. I know him personally. He won the league with uh, Berry. He set up the Plymouth side to win as well. So that he, he's, he's a man who likes to win titles. He likes to chase promotion. He likes to set up sides to win. I don't think he's been back this window the way he wants to be. I think there might be some financial disarray in the background. Okay. They've lost their, you know, Alan Brown and they've replaced him with a lad from Silkeborg um, who is not going to be of the same ilk. So if you look at, I know they've only lost three and they've got three, two on loan and this lad from Silkeborg, but it's not, I don't think the squad's advanced or developed any further because of the window. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think... Um I, I do understand why um, people would say Ryan Lowe's delivered mid slap bang mid table form for two years consistently on a bottom end budget and therefore deserves a bit more backing perhaps. Um, I think although they finished tenth last season, it was slightly misleading because they actually um, won six of their first seven very narrow games that yeah, could have gone yeah, either yeah, way true. and then from then onwards it was bottom six form um, and um, I think in terms of the performance levels you'd kind of question the sustainability if you like and we've not necessarily seen some of the attractive football that maybe Ryan Lowe has been associated with at lower levels like yeah. at Plymouth Argyle he plays Barry. a 3-5-2 system he does like yeah, 3-5-2 he, he yeah. loves a 3-5-2 and I just don't think he's been backed enough. I mean, you got, you, you know, this is a manager that likes to win things. And I think they've got their own idea of recruitment. He may have his own. And maybe it's just clashed. The whole thing's just clashed. And, I don't, and obviously, there is the money that can't be there. Sure. Because to only sign three players, two loan and one from Denmark, Silkeborg. I mean, you're not going to... How much is the guy from Silkeborg going to be on? Three, four grand a week max? Five grand a week mm -hmm. max? So it's not like you bought a big hitter in. Yeah, and the other two's are young under twenty three low knees anyway. One was at Middlesbrough, only scored five league goals. So you haven't improved the squad in the way he wants. I, I'm I'm predicting some financial problems in the background. Yeah, I don't know about financial problems. I think Chef, um, Preston have always worked on a uh, on a low budget at this level. Um, I think they need to kind of embrace a bit more of a selling model where they try and um, spot talent and uh, and kind of develop them and sell them on because that's because that's the only way really because they don't have loads of external um, investment. So um, that's one of the challenges, I guess. Yeah, but with the money going up a little bit this season, I think there's an extra four or five million in in the pot, right? So in your, if you're that if you're self-sustainable and I get they must be this a, it's a very well run club but when I say there's financial I think there's financial they're not, they need to loosen the purse strings more they should have backed this man they're going to find much better than Ryan Lowe he's a proven winner <laughs> you know that's, I, I like Ryan Lowe I think I, I think he's been unlucky this isn't planned let's be honest this is a reactionary no. this is the I mean if we're talking what could have happened my money is on after the game you know someone's going to a dressing room oh you're poor today whatever Something could happen. Managers flared up going, well, if you backed us, da -da -da -da. a few heated words. Before you know it, he's probably thought, you know, F this, I'm off. To, 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 to come in on that, Erdem, to be fair. So, I mean, just quickly, you can find the best articles around on footballpark.com, but on The Guardian, it was reported earlier today that the Preston director, Peter Risdell, he told Sky Sports that the club will take their time over the new appointment and that the decision was taken after a four and a half hour meeting on Sunday after which Lowe was still determined to leave after four and a half hours they couldn't convince him what do you think about hey, that? yeah I mean it shows he's had enough mm. he's a winner he maybe he didn't feel it he wants to be backed he's probably got his targets he's someone who likes to do all the business himself he's um no because we we sold Panucci to Plymouth to him mm -hmm. so we, I kind of got to know you get to know the psyche of the, of the manager that you're dealing with and the psyche is that he has to control everything to do with football. Interesting. So the squad, who's coming do, in, do who's coming so, out. Do you think, though, that that sort of manager is um, dying out a little bit because as football evolves? If you think about this, Erdem, in any other business, it wouldn't be uh, one person running everything. <sighs> it would be the best businesses have people uh, where their roles are kind of streamlined in order to focus on what they do best. It's the Fergie way, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's Alex Ferguson. And Ferguson retired 11 years ago. Yeah, yeah I, I, for me, it's whatever works. Like, it's whatever gives me what I want. So if you're someone that works for free technical directors and you get me up, fine. We'll go with you and get me up. If you want to control everything and you're going to get me up, 
I'll go with you. No, but that's you know? <laughs> no, but that's that's you can't you can't predict the outcome. You've got to focus no, on no, what the no. process is. Sure, but like sometimes a manager that controls everything has a better relationship with the players because they're the ones he wanted to bring in the door. When you have players that like we've been guilty of this, yeah, we bring in a player that's not fancied by the manager. I, I think there's a middle ground, Erdem. So I think I agree with you. You don't want to bring in players over the manager's head, and it's like there's the players you work with them. Uh, I think the manager should definitely have a say on the profile of players that he wants. But if we think of the manager spending this much time at the training ground, watching the opposition, um, and studying game, it's such a demanding job being manager mm -hmm, as yes. it is. Even if you take away the recruitment side. So if you're asking a manager, you've got to go out on Tuesday night and to, to these rounds. Some of them some, love it. Some of them do, but I, I think a lot of them would actually be quite relieved if there was a process going on where you had some good dialogue with people, but they were doing all this in-depth recruitment and focusing on how can we bring in a player that fits what the manager's going to want. That massively widens the pool of players that you're going to chop from. Look, I've worked with six managers, right? Day in, day out. Yeah. And there's common denominators they have. Go on. And one common denominator is they have to feel like they're the boss of the dressing room. You can't take that away from them. The because, dressing room. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the dressing room, who comes in in front of the players, they have to look like they make all the decisions because they all have, I mean, that's what I got when, okay. I, was, when I was working. Maybe that's, we were overbearing, God knows, you know, maybe it's on us, but. Or do you think you recruited managers who are a bit um, power hungry? Six out of six. Yeah, I mean. The, in the league, I mean, the, like that. I've talked to, I mean, when, when you talk to managers, they are, they like to be in charge. So we worked with a lot of managers. I, I mean, they all had, I mean, if you look at the managers that we've looked at, like Joffe and Kuehl went on to, one went into Serie A, the other went and played Asian Champions League uh, final this year. So like Joffe to be in Udinese twice and Verona. Yeah. You know, these guys have come in, but they all had that. By the way, we, we did the recruitment. We gave the final yes or no, even though it was hard at times. Yeah. We always, but it was a democratic way of dealing with things. But they always had some of them more than, you know, they all had that thing where they wanted to be in, in try, even when it comes to playing. So they wanted the power, but then what about when it came to, I've got to, you've got to search these 40 players and you've got to know everything about them in detail while you're managing the team. You've got to look at all the, what the clips, you've got to look at all the data, you've got to make as, do as much of a search as possible while you're already doing your main job. Did they actually enjoy that side of it? No, I mean, that's what I think we provided I mean, because there's two or three of us. Well, there's four of us. So we, we provided a lot of names and we provided a lot of resistance to some of the people that they wanted because you knew it was not going to work out because it was a player that they were familiar with. Yeah. And it's like, mate, that hasn't played in a year. Where, where, why are we paying him this money? Sure. And then that was, that was a struggle. Okay. Because it was trying to make, you know, the guy, obviously you understand that you don't want him but in mm. the most polite way possible. Yeah. And in the heat, and it's a heated moments. Yeah, and many heated moments. But we found, a, you know, the middle ground, uh, a sensible equilibrium. Were we, uh, were, are we the most advanced recruiters of the EFL? No, we came in as a first time. We yeah. learned. But by the end of six, seven years of doing it, you know, day in, day out, I'd like to think in the last two, three years, we, we we had the experience and we did well because we we work with small budgets but we so, work so, with contracts. So how many people ha did would you have say you had on the scouting or recruitment team then? We we had permanently four of us. Okay, all yeah. right, so, yeah, fair. So okay. we 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 were a different body to the manager. Right. Okay. So we so we would sit down and the manager would say what would happen is the manager would give you a list of names. Yeah. We obviously they know them or they don't know them. We give you a load of reports back going yeah that's so like when we signed Tom Nichols. Mm. Oh, we, I, I knew Tom. I mean, when I say knew, knew of Tom. You knew of Tom, and I, yeah. I know he didn't score many. Where did he go, Peterborough? Did Brist, well, yeah, Bristol Rovers. I don't know whether you signed him. No, I think, no was it after Peter? Sorry, Bristol Rovers. Bristol he didn't Rovers. score too many. He had a tough time yeah. somewhere, but he... Uh, he was very creative, though. He's always been very creative. So we were, we were searching for a striker, and you know, Tom Nichols' record wasn't great before sure. he came to us. Sure. So, you know, the manager's like, this guy will do really well. And there, there, there was a bit of a... Then when it came to us... You know, we, we didn't have a striker, man. So I'm sitting there going, look, the manager wants him. It's not a lot of money. Yeah. We're going through COVID. Let's just get who the manager wants because we yeah. can't really find anyone. And they're right. like, no, no, you know. Then the scouts, I said, look, can you have a look at him so we get exactly why, you know, why. And, mm. and the scouts came back and said, this guy would be perfect for the system. Yeah. So in our decision-making room, there was one or one of us that was unhappy with it. 
Right. And then the three of us were like, no, we're getting him. Okay. So we backed the manager to get this. To, because he knew yeah. him as sometimes knowing a player. Like Max Waters hadn't scored mm. a goal. Yeah. So he saw him in the gaffer saw him in one game against Maidstone in a friendly. Okay. And he was like, wow, this guy, he'll do really well for us. We had him in training. I've gone to the training. I've looked at him. I'm looking at mate, like, uh, not really that impressed. So, so, so what I'm really curious about, if we've got time, Ash, um, I'd just quickly, I'd love to sort of explore this bit. Let's say you have this thing where um, manager wants player X. You as a board aren't so sure about it because X, Y, Z. Um, what's the process towards saying yes or no? Is it let's have a conversation with the manager and decide and you, yeah, the manager yeah, yeah. tries you to convince us and then... No, yeah. you need a conversation okay. where sometimes like... We came, this happened with Max Waters actually. Okay. Because my, uh, the chief scout of the club was a 59 year old top goal scorer in Turkey. Yeah. That was his, uh, obviously, ex goal scorer. So he knew football as a striker. He <laughs> looked at play. And then when we were looking at Max Waters, I went into training and honestly, he wasn't good. Like, I'm looking, I'm going, just in the training ground. Yeah. Like, so they were just doing a shooting practice and he was dragging it. And then I thought to myself, he's 21, man. I mean, it's 400, it's not a lot of money. You know, why, why? And then I asked, so I said to the scout, I said, look, the manager really wants him. Yeah. You're saying he's not good enough. Like, you know the manager. Mm -hmm. What do you, he said, listen, some, and then the, the, the scout is what educated me. He said, listen, sometimes it takes a manager to see him in front of him to know what he can get out of him. Yeah. So sometimes put the stats and the history to one side. Yeah. If the manager really feels him, yeah. go for it. So I thought, okay, it's cheap. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Obviously, I pushed for the, the, the thing that was the difference was we went for a one plus one. That was a struggle Explain in itself. One plus one to anyone, it? So uh, one plus one and plus one is that the club has the power to exercise another year. Okay. And the the lad only wanted because we signed all these young boys on three year contracts. I didn't know how to justify to my owner that we signed a striker, a twenty year old, on a one year. Yeah. So as a point of principle, I just made sure that it's a club philosophy that if you're under twenty three, you get a plus one. Because they can't walk out for free then. Exactly. Yeah. And it's bode well for us. You're in control. So Max Waters, I remember he rang me up and he said. I'm not signing. I said, well, look, you've got till tomorrow morning. It's a plus one or find another club. And I, I didn't know what was going to happen. You could have come in and score all these goals or just negotiating for Crawley as you do. So you come and sign. And then come January, you're sitting there. Every club wants him. I mean, you're talking from Championship League One, like players, they're throwing money at him. So that if that plus one is not there, it's probably one of the worst negotiations you're going to be in because yeah. they're going to give you 100 grand 150 grand he's not going to want to play because he's going to be free in the summer right? well yeah it's free in the summer even and the maximum you can do I know because of his age is going to get training compensation <laughs> the training compensation for one year is not going to be very high so you're looking at minimal money again yeah, yeah. You know, with Panooch Panooch was there for three years so it's, you could drive up the training comp it's good it's good business lads um, sorry to take you back to Preston North End <laughs> uh, no no it, it, if, if you're interested in the comments one day if we convince Erdem and we, we, we want to do it we'll do maybe a deep dive into Crawley as well as maybe an episode going forward um, chaps we had a question coming in from Ollie at Fairclough where do you think Preston North End will finish at the end of the season off the back of this managerial change I well, I said seventeenth before the start of the season. Okay. I know depends who they appoint now. Um, I'll probably drop them a couple of places lower. I'm going to say about nineteenth, maybe. Adam. Um, yeah, I'll go with twentieth. Twentieth. 